What's going on, Ray? Bro, bro, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How, how about you, man? I'm good, man. I'm here with my son, man. He got some little glass shards. I'm trying to get those out, so I'm be dealing with that. Y'all hit me go for Apple. Uh, okay. You said he got what now? I don't know. He cut his hand on something. He got like the glass shards, like the little, what was it, the fiberglass shards? Oh, okay. I'm trying to think what I can do to get it out. I don't know how he cut his hand, man. He dropped his iPad, the screen cracked. Oh, okay. And he's, you know, you know he doggone kids, man. He's still trying to play the iPad. I didn't realize the glass was broke. But I just seen it. Like, he just broke it. And I'm like, boy. He's still trying to play it, huh? Yeah. And then he coming to me, ouch, ouch, ouch. I got glass in my fingers. Said, boy, give me this damn iPad. <laughs> Hey, they still like they still be playing stuff and whatnot. Don't let them tell me they sick or something like that. I'm like, well, if you sick, you better make sure you ain't gonna be playing nothing. Shout out to Quadil. Quadil was at the pull up in New Jersey. DJ just I just hollered at DJ. He told me that he saw you out there, Quadil. That he saw you at the pull up too, man. So shout out to you, man. And glad to have you at that pull up and whatnot, man. <coughs> I'm still battling this cold, man. So yeah, Lee. Yeah. This thing ain't been, been rough on me. I know, man. It, it take a little while. You get that cold sometime to get over it. Like, it seems like you got more of a cold in the sinuses. So, yeah, it take a little minute. What's up, Quadra? Let me send him a request. Yeah, I sent it to him. Let me see if he... I sent it to him. Let me see if he, uh, he got it. Send a request to speak and whatnot. You know how, how these Twitter spaces be, man, like... Bro, you telling? I got kicked out three times last. Yo, night. yo, yo! What's up? What's up? Can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, what's man. What's going on? 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 We had a successful day, to, uh, day today. Even got into it, kind of a little bit into one of the politicians out there. Was that the cat? Was that was that the cat with the bald head? I saw you talking to. Yeah, his name is Amiri Baraka. That's Ross Baraka's brother or cousin or something. Okay. <laughs> yeah, DJ say he saw you out there, man. Yeah, he man. Said that, yeah, he, he said you got the you the one that actually got the permit, right? Yeah, I did. Thank God. Um, it was something it was just, you know something I thought that needed to uh, get done. I secured the permit. I I don't I honestly don't believe that we needed it to practice. You know. Our First Amendment right, but you know, just to be on the safe side, we went ahead and got it, got it done, secured the permit. Good thing I did too, because I I ended up using that against the uh, Amiri in our um, little debate, if that's what we all want to call it. Well, I'm glad you went ahead and did that, man. I'm glad y'all went ahead and had the actual pull out. So I know you saw DJ out there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw DJ. Everybody who was out there, I went up to them and said, what's up? So, yeah, I spoke to everybody. It was my first time seeing a lot of those people in person. I went to them, you know, show love. Hey, man, I just want to show you all that, that's how dope it is, man. We go from Twitter spaces to real pull-ups, man. That's dope to see the community come together like that. Right. Yeah, I got you got, I definitely, that's why I had, I, I definitely got to give you a shout out for that, man, that you went up in the space and this and that, and you, you went out there and you did your thing at the pull-up and whatnot. Like I said, you, that's what you do, man. I mean, you went out there and you were one of the, the ones that actually, uh, you know, you, you talked it online and you would actually went out there, so... Definitely shout out to you and everybody that was also at the pull up and whatnot too, man. We just kind of yeah. waiting to people just kind of filter into the room because we're going to be talking about two main topics tonight. We're going to be talking about the, the black women's equal pay day and we're going to be talking about actually these food deserts in the black communities and whatnot too. So just trying to give a like, let a few people come up into the room and whatnot. Shout out to Tony. How you doing, Tony? Glad to see you up in the room and whatnot. So we definitely just waiting to people come up in here. Uh, Janet, a shout out to you as well too. We're just letting our folks come up in here, you know, as they start to filter in, we're going to go ahead and start get this thing started and whatnot. So, yeah, man, that, they knew. it's been a, it's been a crazy day, apparently, for everybody. So I'm glad to hear everybody. What's up, Goddess? How you doing, sister? Glad to have you on the spot as well, too. This before before we continue, just one more thing I want to say. I want to give a shout out to everybody who pulled up. Um, DJ. Oh, 
Nikki, you know, the whole, the whole crew. Yeah, you do it. Hey, mute it for one second, Ray. What? Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Cardi. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I was saying, like, you know, before, you know, we continue, I wanted to give a shout out to everybody who pulled up there. Um, I tried to do my best to let everybody know, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we did this in person. We, we came through, we pulled up. Um, Chef, who organized the whole thing, Nikki, um, Aunt Lai, everybody who did their thing with creating the t-shirts, the banners, the signs, everything was spot on, professional, great. And it was a, it was a way better turnout than I thought it was going to be, honestly. Came out, it, it ended up turning out to be way better. So you know, if we put this up here, if they end up, if they end up listening to the recording on YouTube, you know, I just want to say that, to say this. So for those who didn't hear me or didn't get the chance, or I didn't get the chance to uh, thank them, they can hear it later. Yeah, well, we definitely gonna put it on YouTube, man. And we could definitely, I mean, if y'all want to do a recap about the pull up or whatever tomorrow or whatever, man, just let me know if y'all think that um. You know, y'all have something interesting that y'all want to share about the pull up, and y'all just discuss what went down and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, you and DJ and Aunt Lai and the rest oh, of y'all. That, yeah, most, most, most definitely because uh, a Mary Baraka came in and ran interference. You know, I, I, I honestly didn't know who he was. I didn't, I honestly didn't know who he was until you know he told me who he was. Um, yeah, so it, this that would be a great recap. I'm pretty sure DJ, but DJ would actually love it. DJ was doing his thing out there. DJ was. DJ was doing his thing. Uh, I'm going to yield there. I'm going to yield there. Well, that's what's up then. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to do the recap of the New Jersey pull-up. So that's what's up then. I definitely look forward to look forward to this one here tomorrow, man. Hey, News, I was going to ask you, have you, heard, have you seen anything about this brother, the one that was doing the uh, – <coughs> excuse me. He was uh, a part of the Amazon crew that I guess was fighting to get them wages and all this other stuff. Have you seen him? He's been online a lot more lately. And I'm starting to think his brother might be an agent, for real, for real. They got him, you know, dressed like Tupac. He's wearing the bandanas. He's hey, he's at the White House with, uh, what's his name, Joe Biden. He's taking pictures with Bernie Sanders and shit. Like, where did this dude come from all of a sudden? I'm not sure. I, I, I heard something vaguely about it, but I can't really say I heard much about it, Ray. So I had to go ahead and do a little bit of research on that. But, yeah, I, I heard something about it, a brother that was tied. Amazon, Amazon. I did. Did he have a lawsuit against Amazon or something? I'm trying to think. Yeah, he had a, a lawsuit against Amazon, and I think he won. Or yeah, something. that notion. And it, but this dude's been like all of a sudden, bro. He's popping up at the White House. Like I said, he's taking pictures of all these celebrities and political figures. And I'm just like, bro, did they put this dude here? Like for real? That might be the what's that dude? That Grandmaster Jay? Because you know he was actually. Um, so he, he was working security for Trump, and he's actually the head of the, the Not Fucking Around Coalition. I think I heard about that, a, I think about a month a, a month and a half ago, two months ago, we had something on news told about it, and I think I tweeted it out, but, you know, there's so many articles and stuff. But, yeah, I do remember that, though, yeah. He did win a lawsuit and stuff like that, so, yeah, I got I to gotta go back and trace it, but, yeah, I do remember that, though. So yeah, I definitely, definitely, you just, you just kind of jotted my memory about that, but yeah, I definitely do remember that, man. So, and I was trying to let a few more people go ahead and, and filter into the room, but you know, we can go ahead and get things started, and then you know, everybody as they come in, they can join in or whatever. So I don't want to take up time because like, there's two major stories. So we have to talk about the sisters today. Like we got to talk about the Black Women's Equal Pay Day. Um, you know, I want to go ahead and put this out there and, and have a dialogue with that. And also, I want to talk about this, um, the actual food, um, the food um, deserts that we have in the black community. And I want to actually point out the one in actually Alabama, uh, the black belt. So that's what we're going to touch on real quick. What's going on, Ray? Real quick before we get started, man. I got to, you know, we got to make a shout out. It's Earth, Wind, and Fire Day, man. It's the 21st of September, baby. Okay, yeah, Earth, Wind, and Fire down here, Tallahassee, performing as, as a matter of fact tonight, man. Yeah, it's the twenty first of September. You know they about to rock out. And that yeah. guy, I found the uh, post and I put in the jumbotron if you want to see it. Like I don't know, man, it's something about this dude, man. He really might be a op. Yeah, I had to check it out. Like I said, we we definitely we we had it on news, told him put it out there. So I got to go ahead and check out. I hadn't seen anything lately with him, but. We definitely can uh, talk about that as well, too. But let me just touch up real quick on this thing about, to, you know, today is Black Women's Equal Pay Day. So shout out to the sisters. 
real interesting article. It was it was curated news total platform. It was published by uh, also curated by one of my curators, uh, the Neo Jim Crow, and I believe AOL was the one that originally published it. So go ahead and just just touch up on this real quick. It says today is Black Women's Equal Pay Day. Structural racism and sexism, Insuff- insufficient workplace protections, widespread bias and discrimination, a shameful and adequate minimum wage, lack of paid leave, child care, and adequate investments in home and community-based care that would allow family caregivers to return to work, and now bans on access to abortion care while maternal rates rise. All of these or will be driving factors in disgraceful wage gap black women face, which remains one of the widest and most damaging of any racial ethnic group in America. In the United States today, for every dollar paid to a white man, black women are paid just 58 cents, and black moms are paid just 52 cents for every dollar paid to white dads. This year, the wage gap calculation includes data for part as well as full-time workers, which is more important than ever as the pandemic has disproportionately forced moms and women of color out of full-time jobs. The wage discrimination black women face, which persists across occupations and education levels, is extremely punitive and deeply unjust. It must end. No one should be shortchanged on her paycheck due to her gender or her race, and these lost wages cause hardship and poverty for many hardworking black moms, more than 80% of whom are breadwinners for their families. We cannot build a just society or a strong economy without addressing the long-standing problem the time is for action now, and this was a uh, this statement was by uh, the Moms for Rising, the Chief Strategy Officer Monifa Bundell. Over the course of forty, over the course of a forty year career, Black women on average will lose nearly one million dollars to wage gap. That's unacceptable. We cannot wait any longer for our elected leaders to stand up for Black families and take action to stop wage discrimination. We know the policies that would help end the wage gap. The U.S. Senate must join the U.S. House in passing the Paycheck Fairness Act and the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act to increase protections for workers. Congress must also codify abortion access in the law and give minimum wage workers a long overdue raise to $15 an hour and build the care infrastructure that would allow working families and our economy to thrive, which includes paid family and medical and universal child care and home community based services like living wages for care workers and a permanent expansion of the child tax credit. We must dismantle structural racism and sexism in all forms whenever it occurs in our workplace, our health care system, our criminal justice system, and elsewhere. We will continue to fight until the wage gap is finally and completely closed for black women and all women and moms. So that's just, we're touching up on that. I'm going to go ahead and just knock out this other quick article real quick too. This is about the Alabama food. Uh, this is about the Food desert is happening up there in Alabama. It's one of the hardest hit places in the country. So I just want to go ahead and touch up on that. Then we can just go ahead and start the discussion. Now, for y'all in the room, please go ahead and tweet out the room. Please go ahead and tweet out the room. So we can go ahead and get everything, get everybody up in here that wants to come up in here and discuss this tonight. We're going to have a serious discussion as always. So, Ray, I see you drop down a list. And let me go ahead and put you back at co-host. I don't know if you're having some issues right there or not, but says Alabama, actually the last article was by the Tennessee Tribune, y'all, my bad, and this article was by the Neo Jim Crow and AOL. So Alabama's food deserts hit hard by inflation, black belt children still being forgotten. Angela Pettyway drives 90 miles round trip to the grocery store almost every day. Food runs out quickly in her rural Alabama household. She homeschools two of her children and feeds them all three meals. She also helps care for her dad. More and more recently, neighbors have been coming over to ask if she has any food to spare. Do you know how many people come to me and ask, did you cook today? Can I have a plate, said Pettyway. It's hard for me to give food as well, but my heart is not like that, so I squeeze a little bit out because I don't know where my blessing is going to come from. I don't know if one day I'm going to be that same person asking them to feed me. Pettyway lives in Gee's Bend, a town surrounded on three sides by the Alabama River. The median income of the community is $16,000 and $23. More than half of that county, Wilcox, which is itself one of the poorest in the state. There is a ferry intended to get residents across the river to Camden, the county seat. In 1962, as resident 
of Guy's Bend, who are nearly all black, tried to vote, they closed. The ferry reopened in 2006 again, turning the journey into a faster trip. But it is often decommissioned with mechanical issues, according to Pettyway, leaving her neighbors still largely isolated. So she usually drives her truck to the store, filling up on gas on every trip. There's a convenience store in town, but because it's only the only option, the prices are a triple elsewhere. The last time she forgot eggs to make her neighbor's macaroni and cheese, a dozen cost her nearly $5 at the local shop. Lord, please never let me forget eggs again, she said. A history of deinvestment and exploitation has left this region of the state called the Black Belt a food desert, an area with limited access to affordable and nutritious food. And the children who live there are often the most impacted. In 1967, the president's National Advisory Committee on Rural Poverty called the citizens of the Black Belt a people left behind, said Brandon Renfro, who researched food insecurity at the University of West Alabama. And here we are decades later, later and poverty and the food insecurity have just gotten worse in this region, which is why they're still being forgotten. The Black Belt, the Black Belt originally got its name for the dark fertile soil that made this region of Alabama a hub of cotton production, therefore slavery, with one of the highest concentrations of enslaved black folks in the South. Today, the name refers to the majority black population that lives there people who can mostly still trace their ancestors back to the plantation. But over the past century, local food production has decreased with many farmers aging out of the profession, being priced out or affected by severe soil erosion. Rural communities have been hit hardest by inflation, according to the recent research by the University of Iowa. Residents must drive further for essential services, costing more in gas. Once at a grocery store, the price of food is typically higher because the higher cost to ship products to remote areas. Alabama is also one of 11 states to add a tax to groceries and one of only three to not offer a tax credit or rebate to low-income households. Children's food insecurity in the Black Belt. Children in Alabama's Black Belt region have the highest rates of hunger, malnutrition, and childhood, childhood diabetes. National nonprofit Feeding America estimated the rate of food insecurity in Alabama to be 23% in 2018, the most recent year available. The organization defines food insecurity as a lack of access at times to enough food for an active, healthy life. The pandemic has driven up rates of childhood food insecurity nationwide, with the percentage nearly doubling in 2020 as compared to the previous year. The Household Food Security Survey has been administrated by the United States Department of Agriculture annually since 1995 by asking questions like whether participants worried about running out of food and not having money to buy more Across the U.S., 7% of households with children report food insecurity. Less than 1% of the children are estimated to live with very low food security. But researchers have found that parents who typically fill out the survey underreport food insecurity in their children, missing as much as 50% of children who, who themselves report being food insecure. Last year, Renfro at the University of West Alabama undertook one of the largest known efforts in the country to access to access child food insecurity by asking teenagers to take a version of the household food security survey created by the USDA specifically for youth. Food insecurity is, me is measured nationally from a parent perspective, but we didn't have a lot of data where the children report their own experience, even though studies have shown they are reliable reporters of their own experience, said Renfo. Renfo administrated the survey to 742 students in 16 Black Belt high schools. The study found that a quarter of the students self-reported as experiencing food insecurity with about 9% facing very low food security, meaning food has run out and they've gone a day without eating, far exceeding the national average. Throughout the Black Belt, schools have been an oasis in a food des desert. Schools play one of the biggest roles in combating food insecurity, said Heather Shambri, the, the child national program director for Sumner County Schools. During the pandemic, the importance of school meals was highlighted as a need to increase and become more difficult to get two meals a day directly to students. Black Belt CMP directors worked together to ensure that students were fed, often calling one another for advice to strategize how to get meals to students in more remote locations. Shambri and her staff created bus routes for drivers and central office staff to hand out meals every day while students were learning virtually. 
as we went into the community, we saw the need and prevalence of food insecurity more clearly than we were able to when students were in school, says Shembri, who described seeing poor living conditions and meeting parents who were grateful for the service of her and her staff were providing. While many schools are dealing with, in, with the end of universal free meals, a pandemic program that gave students nationwide free school meals without application or income requirements, most districts in the Black Belt have programs in place that provide a similar service. Sumner County has used a federal program called Community Eligibility Provision to provide free meals to all students since 2018. Districts with 40% or more students eligible for free meals and reduced meals and a high level of participation for students in meal programs are able to apply for CEP by September 30th. Now, Assembly's focus is to help provide free meals to students who need it most over the weekend in partnership with West Alabama Food Bank. The program called Secret Meals provides enough food to feed one child every weekend for an entire school year. Other districts within the Black Belt have also established a Secret Meals program in their schools. No Kid Hungry, a national campaign to end child hunger last year, gave nine Black Belt school districts a combined total of over $250,000 to get the program started, as well to address other needs like new kitchen equipment or bonuses for CMP staff. The West Alabama Food Bank has calculated that it costs $140 to feed one child for every weekend during the school year. They partner with corporations in the Black Belt counties to help fund these programs. So far, Sumner County has raised over $3,000 enough to feed 21 kids. This is a community taking care of the, the community, said uh, Jean Rosinski, director of the food bank. Her staff has begun preparing for an influx of need this year due to inflation and the end of universal meals. Volunteers from sororities at nearby University of Alabama often help pack backpack meals as well as groups from Mercedes plant just a few miles down the road. Chambry comes to Tuscaloosa Base Food Bank once a week to pick up meals that she then distributes to selected students. The backpacks typically include non-perishable and healthy options like raisins, cornflakes, granola bars, and juices. We wish we could give this to every child, says Shambra in the program, but funding is still lacking. It would cost us about $165,000 to feed all of the district students. Rosinski is working to develop more meaningful relationships with corporations like Alabama Credit, and Cahaba Medical to help ensure these programs are lasting and consistent instead of relying on annual donations. If we can make the community investment in children, we can change these communities so they don't have to rely on grants and one-time donations that are not su sustainable, said Rosinski. The, the Carver Sustainability Center at Tuskegee University, located in the Black Belt, is also working to provide community-led and maintain solutions to address food insecurity in this region. We are addressing community and economic development through food systems approach, said Raymond Ashange, director of CISC and associate professor of environmental and agriculture sciences at Tuskegee. We, are, we look at how we can assist in bringing in businesses, food businesses, and increasing the number of farmers that we have here that we think will actually have a compounded positive impact on the economic system and the school system. Change and his team have implemented a variety of programs throughout the region, including pairing high schoolers and college students from the Black Belt with local Black farmers who can mentor them and teach them how to run a farm. They also have built greenhouses and gardens in public K-12 K schools throughout the region so kids can learn to grow and cook their own food. I don't think it's possible to do a top-down solution for local food insecurity, said Change. There's going to be some investment of time and money in people, but communities are ultimately going to be responsible for their own progress. In early August, Petaway gathered with other members of her community outside the Boykin Nutrition Center. A group of volunteer medical professionals and members of Greater Shiloh Baptist Church drove down from Birmingham to provide free medical screenings back to get school supply and food boxes. The mission called A Promise to Help was started by Dr. Sandra Ford and her husband, Henry Ford, both of whom grew up in this region. The organization has gone to Black Belt Community on the first Saturday of every month for 20 years. Today, the Ford see a higher need for food for people who visit the clinics, as well as high rates of diabetes and childhood obesity because they're not able to access healthy food. While the state does not collect juvenile diabetes statistics on the county level, residents of the Black 
Belt have traditionally had some of the highest rates of diabetes in the country due to a combination of factors, including genetics and living in an economically undeveloped region. Doctors at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, have found that rates of juvenile diabetes statewide have rapidly increased during the pandemic. Between April and November of 2020, there was a 205 increase in type 2 diabetes in kids as compared to those in the same months in 2019. Patients who live in food deserts who do not have good options for healthy eating, nor can they afford them depending on their family's finances, said Dr. Mary Scott, associate professor of pediatric diabetes at UAB. A lot of people buy groceries at quick stop places like Dollar General and just really don't have the finances or potentially in some cases knowing about healthy eating that can help them prevent early diagnosis with type 2. So for a recent trip to Lyons County where they saw local grocery store had been replaced by Dollar General was a catalyst to start providing food boxes during the medical missions. We started to talk to a group of men telling them to come down, but they just weren't interested in the clinic. But when I said we were going to get them free food, one of the guys he took off toward said he was starving. I said to the other guys, wow, he is really hungry. And they said, we all are. We don't even have a grocery store anymore, said Henry Ford. At the Nutrition Center, Pettyway took a food box for her family. It contains non-perishables like cans of beans, Chef RD products, bags of rice, peanut butter, preserves, and mashed potato mix. Just a few days ago, she picked up a box like it from a co-op in Selma. As Pettyway waits for essential services and sustainable systems to reach her community, she'll continue to help people while she can and take what she can, what she can get. One minute, you can have everything you need, and the next is gone, she said. This is, this is the time that we're living in. It's insane. We got to come together as a community, and I'm talking about trying to do as much as I can. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, y'all. That's, you know, summing up about the food deserts that we have, not only in Alabama, but the food deserts that's all throughout the nation, all throughout the country. So, you know, we're talking here, for those that just came in, we're talking about uh, today being Black Women's Equal Pay. And we're also talking about the vast number of food deserts. And this article here in particular was, was pinpointing the actual major problem they had in this region they call a black belt in Alabama, where, you know, food deserts just mean pretty much that people don't have access to healthy foods, the grocery stores and stuff like that. And a lot of places, people have to travel, like, you know, they have to travel pretty, pretty far to even get to these grocery stores. So then you're left with going to convenience stores, you're left with eating a... Uh, a bunch of food, junk food, microwavable food. You're not getting fresh fruits. You're not getting fresh vegetables. Of course, the impact is on the kids because the kids are eating a bunch of junk. So now you're dealing with type 2 diabetes and children, children diabetes and things of that nature like that. Plus, this was an old slave region. The actual, the medium income is $16,000. Think about making $16,000 in 2022. So that just leads to all kind of different issues and all kind of different problems and stuff like that. Also, we're talking about the actual um, the pay that black women were getting compared to white men. And they're saying that for every dollar that a white man makes, black women makes 58 cents in comparison. So I would actually like to know what's the breakdown. Also, what the, in terms of black women's pay compared to white women's pay, I think that would be a good, um, that would be a fair um you know, a fair way of judging things as well as black men's pay compared to, to, to white men's pay as well, too. So if anybody in the actual space has anything to say, you guys know you can feel free to go ahead and uh, request to open a uh, speak on the mic or whatever. DJ, how's your connection for the night? I assume DJ's there. Maybe not. Hey, what's up, y'all? Apologies, I got some company over. So, you know, we just over here recapping what happened up in the Jersey space, man. Uh, you know, shout out to everybody. What's good, everybody? Ray, what's good, Queen? What's up, Original? What's up, Sizzle? What's up, Tony Quad? my boy. Glad you showed up, dog. Jersey! Oh, Reparations, you know what I mean? I'm over here with the brother Mutai, but go ahead, Todd. We here. We just, we over here listening to y'all, yo. No, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm just, we just, I, I just read a couple articles. I'm just simply talking about, you know, the actual food shortage that we have. 
of course, this this we, we highlighted the um up here in Alabama, the black belt, but there's food shortages all throughout the nation. I mean, I don't care what area that you're in or whatever, because you see that how many black owned grocery stores, and that's something we were talking about the other night. Like, we don't even have any black owned grocery stores and stuff like that, man. So, until you start controlling the, the, the narrative that you, you're farming and, and you're growing your own food, and not only that, but you have your own outlets and stuff like that where you can sell your own food, and it's also you have a you have enough places. You know, so people don't have to go 25, 30 miles and don't have to travel 40 minutes to go ahead and, and get and, you know, get access to actually good food and stuff like that. It's going to be an issue. You got it, DJ. Hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. So, you know, basically, when you talk about the food desert stuff, you know, I do the landscape and agriculture, horticulture. So with that being said, you know, we talk about stocking this water. You know, you saw what happened with the Buffalo situation, that 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 that, that racist, prejudiced piece of crap, Peyton Geiger, went up in the there yeah, and shot our peoples up. Now our ancestors, you know what I mean? And what did he have on a stock barrel of the gun? Reparations, you know what I'm saying? So the price just doubled on, on that note, you know what I mean? But we still got to keep pushing. You know, our little pull-ups we having is fire. We getting to meet each other off of this Twitter space. That's dope. But at the end of the day, we're going to have to be doing this shit every week because... These, these folks is just really giving away our bread. You know, all this money they're giving to a lot of these illegals, other things going on over in Ukraine. Well, ain't no uh, American citizens in Ukraine. They get no tax money back for no uh, handout loans to fight some war that y'all started. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you better start learning how to grow food. You better start learning how to do canning. I'll be t- teaching and trying to, you know, preach the word on a uh, doomsday prepper. Be a prepper, man. Look up what prepping is. It's not hard. You know, you just got to put a little effort into it. Think about it. If you had to shut down your house today or you get shut down for whatever national emergency, whatever it be, how much water you got in your house? Look what's going on in Jackson, Mississippi right now. It's going on over here in North New Jersey at the same time. A lot of folks over there in East Orange, New Jersey, don't got no uh, running water. A lot of them old senior builders and stuff like that. We're going through the same thing with lead pipes and all this other stuff. So, yeah, we need to be stopping on this ship every day, yo. You go, go put some water in your house, man. Real talk. Also, also, I'm going to say this right here. Originally, I know you requested to speak, but I'm also, since you guys are out there and we, you know what I'm saying, we can always come back to this topic. I, I'm also thinking because, you know, people want to hear about the actual pull up, too. So I'm actually going to probably um, in a second change the actual name of the space. And we're going to start you guys. I want you guys to go ahead and share with us what actually happened at the actual pull up today as well, too. But that's right. That's right. Okay well, we, 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 well, you know, I was trying to have one later on. But hey, if you want to switch the room, let's get it, bro. I tell tell everybody to come up here, quiet, cause I'm just getting back up here to Twitter, so I ain't I ain't you know following everybody just yet. But yeah, invite the Jersey crew up here, quiet there. Okay, but let me go ahead and um, that was a New Jersey pull up, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, North New Jersey, North New Jersey City Hall. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I want to because I want to hear like I know Quad he he um he, he sent me the, the video today and whatnot and like I said we can always come back and talk about this too but uh and we can just I want to share this with everybody and let them know too since I had since we got a couple people in the actual room that was there too. Hey, Quadir, can you hear me? Can you guys hear me still? So, Quadir, yeah, let me go ahead and put you on. We you. I want to put I want to put you as a speaker too because I want you just to share. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I want you and DJ to actually share. You know what happened as well too. So. I got you. Yeah, you can go ahead, bro. You can go ahead and um, you a DJ, whichever one y'all want to go first and, and start talking about the actual events because you know people want to actually know what went down as well too. Hey, yeah, brother, quite want to go ahead and like I said, I'm entertaining some folks up here, but I can speak still if quite don't want to go right now. Matter of fact, I'm trying to get off folks up here. As a matter of fact, I, too, though. I, I believe um, DJ is the best. Um, before you came, DJ, I kind of already gave him a quick recap. I mean, I could go over it again of what happened, but you were 
Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. You, you were on fire today. You were on fire today. <laughs> believe me, guys. DJ, so appreciate DJ, you, my boy. Appreciate you, you know what I mean? Yeah, believe me, DJ is the best one for this. Yeah, DJ, go ahead. I know you got some people over there, but go ahead. No, and no, no, no. We over here chilling and, you know, just, uh, you know, hanging out. You know what I mean? Nothing else going on. We just, we actually doing the same thing, recapping what happened earlier. But we listening to y'all too, though. So, you know what I mean? It's all good. But to make a long story short, appreciate you, Quad. And I, and, I, and I appreciate and love you, bro, for pulling up, bro. See, the shit wasn't hard, man. We just got to show the fuck up, man. Especially when we say we going to do what we put our word on you feel what i'm saying bro so you know you went out your way to go make it happen so yeah you bet you do you, you more than anybody gotta be there you feel what i'm saying so with that being said again y'all you know shout out shout out to the homie uh du dupree kelly aka aka councilman kelly uh, of newark new jersey you know what i mean he also goes by the name of do it all from laws of the underground do it all from laws of the underground so the brother pulled up today obviously he was going to city hall to do his thing you know what i mean and, you know, he wanted to know what was going on. But, unfortunately, here go Roz, family, running infiltration, man. Talking about, oh, we need education. If you don't get your ass out of here, I got three degrees on the wall right now. And then debt to one of them. You know what I'm saying? So, what the hell are you talking about? I got enough education, bro. Show me where the money at that they're giving these illegals the same amount. I'll come up, too, with no complaint and say, hey, it ain't the white man. That, that That's real easy. You know what I'm saying? So, we had a whole lot of interference even after you left while we were still down there. Me, Race of, Race of Bo, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Chef, and a couple of my other brothers with the cameras and shit, you know what I mean? Just rolling around the bricks, yo, you know what I mean? Got into it with a couple of Pan-Africans you know, that's out there, unfortunately, you know what I mean? And they don't understand. Reparations is lineage-based, man. At the end of the day, you can sit up here and say, oh, we all black. No, man, you can't flatten blackness. Hey, check this out, man. I wound up on the way back to the uh the spot and shit, wanna walking past City Hall because I was parked over there and shit by the post office. Uh the the dude at the uh he was working one of the uh one of the little parking garages named Eddie and shit, you know what I'm saying? He he but he said he black and white, but he said he black and white Colombian. You feel what I'm saying? So I said he was like, yo, what, what's that flag? What was going on? I said, Hey yo, you know, this is the black American flag right here. You know, yeah, da, da, da. he was like, Yeah, I understand. So he understand what's going on, Dad, but I'm telling him, hey, look, our government here in New Jersey is promising these Latinos reparations. A couple months ago, I was over here, June 10th, yada, da 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 A whole bunch of Latinos was out there. You saw a quad, you feel what I'm saying? So why is our government, or at least the New Jersey government anyway, promising illegals, specifically Latinos, that don't have a plight or any type of suffrage in this country the way we do reparations? And why y'all piggybacking off of our shit? That's the real argument. You can get your own and we'll support it. You know what I'm saying? Let's go get your own thing because yeah. you don't you don't identify as black. You, you know, fat Joe, you say you black uh, or Latinos is black too. Show me the uh, last 10 years of your census record, medical records, job applications. What did what was you vote in history? What was you putting down? And who was you voting for? Because I'm pretty sure you was voting Republican. You, you, you're a capitalist. You bought this money. You're in a different tax bracket. We ain't stupid, bro. And then you saying you created 50% of hip hop Latinos. You would have to show me the hip hop in Puerto Rico that was going on in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. Hello? You know what I'm saying? Where's that shit at? But again, remember, Qua, Roz pulled up for the Juneteenth, but you notice he ain't pull up for our shit, bro. You peep that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I peeped that. I peeped that. Hey, right. I, I don't think, and I also think of Mary Baraka, I don't think he came out until until you hopped on the mic and you and you called out Roz, because I ain't seen him before that. I don't know if anybody else saw him before that. Hey, so so for the record again, right? Wait, 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 wait. You called out the you called out the man too, bro? Hell yeah, fuck that nigga, bro. If, no, excuse my friends on the new starter. Well, he a cool. Actually, one thousand percent. How should it go one hundred, bro? You know what I'm saying? Don't turn your back on no man because I'm telling you reparations is lenient, bitch. That's what he did on the Juneteenth reparations march. You feel what I'm saying? Hey, Mr. Mayor, came to him peacefully. Yeah, as, yeah, as, as a, yeah. As a mayor, you can't be doing that, man. You're supposed to, right? Even right, if you don't man. Agree with you're another to, black man. Like, come on, fam. Show, yeah. At least show me enough respect. At least listen to me. Even yeah. if you don't give a fuck and throw the fire away later, I can respect that. You know, yo, yeah. I, honestly, yo, even I think even the um, white politicians would have uh, had to at least listen. You know, even even though they would still do what they would do. You get what I'm saying? Well, Corey listened to me and shot, you know, and Payne Jr. listened to me. But what did Payne Jr. say? Hey, sir, reparations lineage based. You know, we need our check. Hey, well, we can't get uh, 
anything until we pass HR 40. HR 40 is a study. That shit don't mean nothing. You study in fucking history. What the fuck that got to do with anything? We need cash payments right now. If you dumping all this bread in the Ukraine, a place that ain't no Americans working over there, where the hell is the tax bread coming back from? It ain't. You just giving all this money away. Google, look, all day long. Look at the office of New America. Look it up. They're giving these folks everything. Right. What's the argument? You know what I'm saying? So why can't we get our piece of the pot? We voted for you, Jim Crow Joe. At least I didn't anyway, but 90% of my folks did. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, look, you don't have to run that that, that checkbook, though. Break, break right. a brother off, man. You know what I'm saying? So right. at the end of the day, hey, look, Raj, you super cone gang. You know what I'm saying? Because I told you reparations is lineage based. You rolled your eyes at me and turned your fucking shoulder, yo. Real rap. You know what I'm saying? I stood on you like a fucking prey to a fucking, you know what I'm saying? It's me. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's fucking get it, yo. I, I mean, I'm a hunter to the prey. Real shit. Hey, yeah, so yo, boom, 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 reparations. Da, 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 da. So you might be right about that, Quad. Yeah, as soon as I start mentioning his name, whatever. But what the hell that got to do with anything? You exactly. already know what the hell's going on. You're a, a Democratic politician still. And I and I got on the phone. Matter of fact, when we when we all split up, man, I'm telling you, this shit be God sent, bro. It just thing be God sent, bro. Bumped into a sister, right? She just lost her house, fire, walking around with her two kids, even though she's staying at her pop's house. She young. And to be that young and had your own thing going on, thank God I, my, my one of my home fr- cousin's friends worked for housing, yo. And it was all like weird coincidence that we started following each other again on Facebook. So when I, she told me that the sister that we met, I'm like, hey, little sister, what's up, reparations? You know, oh, that's what's up, da, 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 da. And, you know, the brother Rachel Ball was saying something to her. And then she told us, like, look, you know, I'm homeless right now in the fire. You know, I don't even got a phone right now. And the phone got burnt up in the fire. So hopefully, you know, my, I got back with my sister, you know what I'm saying, that work at the housing. She said, yeah, she talked to her father. And they're gonna work it out. So hopefully she can get some type of housing immediately. So that shit was just meant for us to be down there, yo. Well, no, just just to add that in there, yo. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad, yo. I'm glad I ended up going, man, because the, the information we got running into Mary and his uh his interference, man, catching that on video was uh was perfect. It was perfect, man. And I'm and shout out to everybody. Shout out to everybody and how we all responded to home and his uh gang of goofies man because that was that was awesome racer come all the way from nyc yeah shout out to rex you know what i mean matter of fact i gotta add my boy back on hold up a minute but look but look but even with that being said Qua, like i said the brother in the green that's brother dupree kelly right there he the counselor in north that's laws of the underground he down with the cause because he when i that's why i immediately stepped to him and gave him a reparations dvd you see what i'm saying bro hey look reparations when you get a chance check it out i ain't gonna patrol your air off right now uh Dupree, you can just sit here and uh, listen to what we're talking about. You feel what I'm saying? So, like you said, until I started saying, hey, yeah, Roz, and I turned the microphone to the point in the city office. They're talking for a minute. Come on out. You know what I'm saying? Warriors, come out and play. So, at the end of the day, Roz is a damn multimillionaire off the city of the pain and suffering of Norcus. Niggas out here still getting killed. Niggas doing what the fuck they doing. Ain't nobody working. What's good, bro? But everybody else got something. It ain't Negro American. That's the fucking problem right now, bro. Right, right. And just for some, just for some context, right? For those of you who don't know about North, uh, North New Jersey, believe it or not, it's actually a very uh, diverse city, but it's very seg- segregated. The black side, right. where all the right. FBAs are, that junk is it's in shambles. Honestly, I'll hey, we, we still, we still fifty percent out here, but it's hard to even tell the fifty percent of who's what and what. Right, right. It's, yeah, it's really hard to tell who's NBA and who isn't because yeah, North is very diverse. Um, Real quick, because uh, I was gonna, I was your boy. You permit? He was up here. Let me let let me get you permit because like he's having some problems. Um, he's having some problems like standing in, in, as a speaker. So let me get you permit up here. I want y'all to go back cooking, but let's get this brother up. Here. He had his hand up here, but hopefully, um, you permit. Go ahead and unmute your mic because I know you're having some connection issues. Look like yeah, I was just uh gonna say you know appreciate you. Up there, um, due to my job, that that time frame, I wasn't able to get up there to know it. But I'm glad it did pop off. And also, I have a question: What do y'all know about Reverend Childress that's supposed to be running against uh, Payne for that district up there in Newark? Because I live down here in Somerset, not too far from Rutgers, so I'm not too familiar with. But I did see Childress' name pop up running against um, Payne. 
Um, do y'all have any insight on about him? No, nah, I'm gonna say, well, yeah, me, me, me and the brother Muta, we both said the same thing. We never even heard of this brother, but uh, send us the information, post it in a jumbo chomp permit. What's good, bro? Yeah, please. I've never heard of him. Yeah, I forget how funny he ain't All right. Hey, what, what what was the type of crowd out there? Was it a pretty nice sized crowd out there, y'all, or whatnot? Hey, hey, uh, hey Tata, uh, let me introduce the brother Muta. You know what I mean? Coming up from Jersey, North the Brick. He want to uh, piggyback up what Quad did just said. Go ahead, bring him up. Peace and blessings, brother. First of all, I want to thank y'all. I want to thank y'all for coming out. That was a, that was a good experience, and listen, that that type of that type of active motion doing something right there it, it, it throws people off guard right and throwing people off guard is, is comfort especially when we talk about our politicians it makes them it makes them not in control and our employees shouldn't be in control and they've had control for a long time so for everybody who participated you know spoke held up signs was out there like that was a dope experience. That's just coming from me. Um, also, just let y'all let let everybody know. Like this, this type of stuff has to continue. It has to happen. I forgot why I was why I was going in the mix of that, but I I wanted to give thanks once a week, for anything. Once a week, man, we're trying to do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah go ahead. Hey, have they have they had one up there? Because I know you guys not that far from New York. Have they had one in New York yet? Uh, I, I thought that, uh, 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 brother Devon and Tony Blunt and them was supposed to be doing it, but I, I don't know, man. But the brother Ray Sabo, he came down from the city. And, uh, brother Cash Gaines was down there, too. Trust me, we was floating around the city for about five hours, bro. Easy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because I know when I spoke to you, like, I know you said you had just got back or whatever, so, like, I you had to be down there for a minute today, man. Well, talk, bro. We, was, we, 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 we went to the source of knowledge. If, for those that don't know, Big up to the Source of Knowledge. That's the North, North New Jersey's eldest black-owned bookstore. Source of Knowledge. Come down to Broad Street, North New Jersey. Matter of fact, Patrice and Masani, black-owned. Yeah, tell them about it, Moo. Tell them about it, Moo. My bad. Listen, Source of Knowledge bookstore, this this the place. If you need black books, they're going to have everything. If they, if, they don't, if they don't got it, you tell them they're going to order it. If you need help producing a book, they help black authors. Yeah, we got so, like, this is this is what like we talking about jewels and shining stars in the community. That that that's one of those because they mentored me personally. So I wouldn't talk about nothing that I, I don't know for sure. So those are good people when we talking about getting information as far as books. So it's the only black owned bookstore in North, especially in a downtown area when everybody else is getting gentrified. Send so, me that info when you can, please. Hey, hey, and what and yeah, what's up with sure, the, sure. what, what's up with the mayor's brother? Because I, I, hey, what what happened with the mayor's brother? Because I saw like a quad in there. I, I saw like the video. I know it was a, a short video. Uh, just, just, just to be quick with it. So again, right? Just, just, wait, but before you go, DJ, hey, news. There was two videos. There's two videos. It's two. Yeah, I, I ain't watch the one. replay video squad. I didn't watch the replay. No, it was still live, so you know. Yeah, that's why. I'm like the video too. That's why I told you to watch both links in my tweet. I said two videos. There's one where we initially encountered him. That's when DJ was, you know, giving him that work, and then we you know we all started giving him that work after that. But it wasn't all. I didn't capture all that. And then the second video is when I got home. When I got home, uh, when I got it recorded of him saying. Who, who he is and who he's with and I'm trying to tell us that we shouldn't have been in front of City Hall doing it. And I was like, nah, man, it's the First Amendment right and we could do it. And he, was trying, and he was trying to say, yeah, it's the First Amendment right, but that's still, like, you should be at the federal. I was like, yo, listen, I got, I was like, yo, I secured the permit for us to be here. Get out of here. And he ain't like that. And I told him that. I thought he was trying to step to me. I told him, I was just like, I told him to have a nice day. So he he's sitting up there. Y'all having a y'all have a, a permit to be up there and whatnot. And he's sitting up there trying to block his brother. His brother did come out there though later on, right though. No, nah, Mary. I don't know if, if Mary's his brother, his cousin. I, all I know is that all I know is that they're related. But yeah, there's two videos. So if you go back and watch, I don't know which one you have seen. The one I think the one you watch is the one where DJ was giving him that work. Um, and he's saying that you know, and everybody should get reparations. 
Yeah, I saw term. that part where he was saying that because they were talking about what's black, what's black, and then people was like, we could define black, but I don't remember seeing DJ on there. Right. But I saw I saw that video when when he was like, because at first when it came on the video, you know, kind of it was like stand, it was kind of small, and then it increased in size and whatnot. But I saw one gentleman on there talking about like everybody should get reparations. We black, we black, and then people like with well, the fine black, the fine black. So. I remember DJ said that before that they was trying to include everybody up there in the reparation thing that they like he was saying he was talking about Hispanics and and you had like the um I know you had like the Pan African flag and this and that but are they still trying to include everybody into the actual reparation claim as well too? Oh yeah yeah they're definitely trying to do that they they they're real hard with that there's a lot of um coons in North you know when we went to the Juneteenth pull up one lady was even one lady was adamant telling me that I'm African and you know, I'm like you know the hell I'm not and she was. She was she was trying to it seemed like she was trying to keep herself calm with it too. So I'm like, all right. I, I, I hung around for a little bit, then I dipped from that. But yeah, but today, you know, they tried to they they're still pulling that. I don't know why. Maybe because Ross Baraka and uh, Mary Baraka's pops was a Pan Africanist, uh he was a Pan Africanist uh protest, uh what you call those? I don't know, activist, a uh, Pan African activist, activist, yeah. Yeah, he was a Pan African activist, so maybe that's why they're still hard on it. But you know, that junk don't fly over here. So, but in the second video is where I got him to say who he is. So if you just go back in the tweet, or if you want me to send it, maybe I could post two different. I could post both links in the jumble, Sean. I'll probably see if I can do that. Yeah, see if you can do that, man. Because like I said, I saw the one, and I, I I know you said two. You sent me two, but I could only see that one. So definitely go ahead and send that and if you uh, dm me or whatever or, or tweet it out or whatever it don't matter you can put it in the jumbo trial but yeah i definitely i saw that one i saw him like the dude was going off to be like yeah yeah we, we we black we black we we all black like i mean nobody said they didn't say we weren't black but you know i mean people got to understand that you're talking about one group of black people here so i don't understand what's the issue behind it i don't understand why people have such a problem with that like you have the actual like luther campbell now is talking about the the, 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 the the royal family the, 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 the England or whatever owes reparations to the Bahamas and Jamaica but you know when people were saying about black Americans everybody got in a hissy fit like but, so it's okay for y'all to get y'all but when it's time for us to get ours and it, it's a hissy fit it's everybody supposed to get it and I know if if the Bahamas and, and, and Jamaica got it they wouldn't sit up there and say well you know the black Americans they was also enslaved by the British too so they they should they get a piece of our reparation they go oh no no they gotta take that up on their own so I don't understand all that, but Snug, um, I'm going to go ahead and let you get up on here. Uh, mute your mic. Appreciate it, News Charter. Um, thank you for holding this space. Um, I, I see my DJ Sag one out here. We just finished stomping. Um, New Jersey pull-up recap. What happened today? I just want to touch in on what y'all were saying. Because I was up there on those stairs, and all I heard out the corner of my ear was, we all from Africa, though. And I looked over at the person that was holding the sign with me, and I said, um, here, hold my sign for a second, please, because um, I need to walk down these stairs and walk this nigga down. Because I had already I had already peeped them sliding out the side door of City Hall with their suits on. Now, you remember, when I was a little kid, I used to play a game, um, Golden Eyes, like a 007 game, Super Nintendo, all that shit. When you would infiltrate the building, you have all these random ass clowns and minions that would start sliding out of random doors and shit like that. That's how these niggas was, but they was in suits and bow ties with um with funny funny um orthopedic shoes on, and they all looked the same. And the crazy part about it is they were all sitting in front of this place trying to walk us down. And I had to tell him, I said, first of all, sir, out of respect of my mama's family that's freedmen, and out of respect of my daddy's family that goes back to free men. You need to understand that not everybody come from fucking Africa, first of all. And but if you go back far enough, you know. What does that have to do with this claim? And that's what I'm starting to learn to talk to these people with bills. Because they sat there, looked at me in my face, and they said, see, y'all don't know what you're doing. You should have walked down the street to the federal side. And I said, if you go down there, you'll see there's flyers right there at that building from here to there. And if you speak to the people from here to there, you're going to see that I walk with Shantae down there to stop down that area. But what you didn't know was I was already at my district representative. So what's his name? Donald Payne. Shot to Donald Payne Sr. with that big ass bust he got out there in Newark, right next to Rosa Park. Memorialized. They, they love putting our damn people in these daggone brown statues. But I digress. I said, what you didn't see is me walking down Donald Payne at his office at 9 a.m. in the morning. I've been waiting for him. You just here at the protest that's for a, pr 
permit in front of City Hall. And you asked why we're here in front of City Hall, Rasta Rock. Rasta Rock got your back. And I said, I thought he had the back of here. I thought Rasta Rock, that's why we got our back here and we're down here with the people. Because the people ain't up by broad by uh, on 60 Nelson where Donald Payne is. Because when I got dropped off there, it was nothing but 12 there, circling around the block, got to go through 12, all of that. So there's layers to these pull-ups, y'all. And I recommend that we should all know what our district representatives is. And you know what? Fuck a we. I'm learning to stop saying we. I'm learning to say I. And when I woke up this morning, I said, I'm going to show up to Donald Payne Jr.'s office at 9 a.m. in the morning to walk him down right quick before this 11 a.m. pull-up. I'm going to walk my ass right down that hill. And then come to find out, it's Ross Barack. And we thought he was down for what we down for. Come to find out he was holding reparations conferences with Puerto Ricans on Juneteenth, family. That blew my mind when I heard that today. And then his minions come sliding out the side door and talking about we all black. You know what? You might be right. I'm learning. Don't argue with these clowns. You might be right. What does that have to do with this claim right now, family? And you claim your family from the Carolinas and all of that. How your family doing down there while you up here shucking and jogging with your fancy? Botox. But that, 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 that had me realize that these folks that claim they for us, they're not really for us because them boys turned around and pointed to the building across the street from that city hall and said, a black woman owns that building. See, we trying. Y'all just ain't listening. And I'm like, I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the whole that going block down this broad street that black Americans built. You point to a building come to find out that building is actually owned by black. Where is he from? We ain't all yeah, black. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that, and that restaurant he's talking about, she's African. She's not even one of us. I know exactly. Exactly. Right. Got the nerve to call it cornbread. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Off of our backs. Yeah. She's African. Yeah, so, Jersey. Know, I, 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 hey, yeah, I, I can look at the space and tell Jersey's yeah. definitely in the house tonight. I see some Jersey people up in here, man. Uh, lie. I see Ari up in here, like Jersey starting to fill up in the spot. Like, I forgot DJ Tokyo. Get down, kid. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it, Jersey. You know what I mean? Share I the room and try the game. Jersey. I, for, I, I forgot you. Know, I forgot you. You told me last night, man, that you was going to go to the spot. So I didn't even think about making the space until you, like, Claudia started talking and whatnot. And we had this other space going on. I'm like, well, we might as well get on the Jersey thing because, I mean, that. I, y'all so hyped up about it and whatnot. I'm like, we need to go ahead and talk about it. We're going to try to do it tomorrow. I'm like, we might as well go ahead and talk about it now or whatever. So. Hey, family, we just pulled in from Stompin'. Like, I just took my boots off on that type of time. Hey, hey, news, I posted both links in the double chan, so you should have two separate links. You should see two separate links. Oh, go ahead, man. Go ahead and put it up there. You permit. I see you got your hand back up. So, yeah, I want to uh, lie. If you get a chance, you want to talk tonight and tell us about your experience, too. Come up here. We want to hear from the sisters. They perspective that was out there as well, too. So we just want to hear about it Um, because this is actually our own close-knit people that actually took part in the actual in the actual pull-up. So we definitely want to hear y'all. Y'all know what I'm saying? What went down and whatnot. So you can hear the excitement with everybody else. So I, I just want to hear I just want to hear the experience and whatnot. I want to know how what it was like out there. I mean, just the people coming together and whatnot and y'all actually standing for something. We yeah, y'all started this online and yet y'all was able to get up with each other and do the damn thing. So, you know, that, that that's a sense of pride right there as well too. Uh Snug, I'm gonna get back to you. Let me let you commit because he had his hand up. You commit. Go ahead and unmute your mic. Yeah, I just wanna ask, what was that dialogue you mentioned about um he Ross Barack had a meeting with some Hispanics in Newark about reparations? On Juneteenth. On Juneteenth, bro. Where, hey, where, hey, we, where you saw up. us hey, stomping? Hey, Go ahead, break up. Hold up. I'm going to post I'm gonna post it in a jumbotron. Give me two seconds uh, per minute. Because the reason why I asked that, because don't the... Because I have some accounts up there in Maplewood, and I see like a whole bunch of immigrants migrating up there in that part of Newark outside of Maplewood. Don't the... Don't we see this stuff happening and Ross Barack will have the nerve to have a meeting about some reparations, but yet his people don't know tomorrow reparations for everybody. You see, this is the bullshit that Ross Barack is on. He's on this gen- he's on this bullshit. What they going how he's doing it is what they're doing in New York City. He's gonna get all these investors to come in, buy up all these houses, kick us out, bring them. Illegals in there. 
and and and, and that's how that's just gonna get down. But that, if his own people does not, if people in Newark don't see what this man is doing, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Right, and a lot of people don't. But that's exactly what's going on up here. That's exactly it's already happening. Yeah, because I, I know DJ was saying something before about uh, uh, Ross. Uh, you permit? Did you get a chance? Did you actually get a chance to speak, brother? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I spoke. Okay. Uh, it's like, hey, I know permit. You, you, hey, permit. Follow me back. I'm not sure I can't tag you in this in this thing right here. Uh, Snug, if you want to go back and speak again, you go ahead and, and speak. One, one minute, I just want to touch on it, like you said, to put you, put y'all there. Um, as we're wrapping up, as we're wrapping up, we're walking away. Um, you know, uh, DJ said one is flagging hard. That man flagged until I saw him. Until I, uh, he was walking around the corner, leaving. But peace, y'all flagged, still blazing. But we're walking away from the city hall steps, and um, uh, I would say these three colonizers' wives, ex-wives, I'd even say. These are, they, they look like they on the, um, what would you what would you say DJ said when they look like they was visiting, right? Let's go visit the George, the, the yeah, George yeah, Floyd yeah, yeah, yeah. mural, right? And so the George Floyd mural is, is bigger than life size. So, you know, if he actually stood up, he'd probably be maybe eight feet tall or something. So it's larger than the actual George Floyd was. These women get up in there like they on a damn Caribbean cruise sprawling stuff so george floyd is sitting with his kind of legs open a little bit you know what i mean like just legs just not together sitting down on the bench they don't prop themselves up in this man crops taking pictures laid out like they on the cabana this is in the front of city hall and, I, and then they and then they shared the camera and then i'm like this the disrespect this is why i don't even believe that the statue should even be up there as long as george floyd family ain't had they had restitution from everything that's going on as long as they don't have reparative justice all that crap we march for we got a bronze statue for for these for these sun dried raisins to take pictures of this man's crotch they was laid out in this man crotch in the middle of the city hall hey, hey, hey bro i wish you would have said something because i had my back turned to the statue so as i was talking to you and other brother muhammad so you, you, you came back around. You're like, yo, you saw what I said? No, what happened? And then you just explained what you just explained. I said, damn, why you ain't saying it? Because I would have let him have it. If y'all get y'all cracker asses the fuck up out of here, we have been smacking y'all, yo, and going off on y'all. And ain't no disrespect to the white folks I know and love that really had an influence on my life too. But y'all know what it is and shit. Don't be throwing no dumb ass shit around here. But this is the problem where I'll be saying majority of our people are gone. Our people's around here too coned out and too... Just, just normal being trying to live like the Jeffersons to even check these fucking colonizers, yo. Because I definitely would have let them all ass out of it. Y'all, y'all would have put it on blast to the point you would have had to have this cop lock me up right here. You would have told this, you, the cop would have saw that shit. And he, I would have went to jail today, yo. You know what I'm saying? On some real shit, you know what I mean? Don't do no shit like that. But this is why me and a lot of other Northers, no disrespect to George Floyd, rest in peace, bro. We don't want even want the statue around here, yo. Keep it real because th- the shit like that, yo. Keep it real. You just helped me yeah. out because I, I I felt torn when I heard when I saw that because I had already said twenty minutes earlier we don't need the statue like as long as there's no reparative justice this is yet another bronze statue because I had just come from Donald Payne's uh, office up there on top of that hill and what did I walk by I walked by an actual Rosa Park sitting on an actual bronze bench. And you know, a white dude was the one who actually sculpted George Floyd's um, uh, statue. It was a white guy. It's not like it was helping us because the funding and stuff that was, you know, gathered went to the white guy that did the sculpture. You see, you see, you know what I'm saying? It's like it wasn't even a black artist that did it. I mean, they didn't even hit us with a brown artist, but they check white anyway. No, it was a white artist. It was a white artist that did it because they did a feature of him in, uh, I think, either the New York Times or Post, something like that. But at the end of the day, it's not one of us. But look who has benefited off his death. Everybody except for us. Hey, look, I'll tell you what, family, with, with the people who really stepped up, we're sitting there with our chest out in front of the city hall, and then um, here come the Latinos sliding through. 
the hatred that they have just seeing black people trying to actually foundational black Americans trying to make something of themselves and demand what we want. What what she say? Um, DJ said once you roll by, she said this is this this pull up is anti Puerto Rican is is Puerto Rican hate. I said, how the fuck did you insert yourself in the middle of this pull? Where did you insert yourself in this? Hey, yeah, I, I didn't even hear that because you know there's so many people walking downtown right there in front of City Hall. Everybody. You know, it, it, it was it was a bunch of, you know, just regular Hispanic, Latino, whatever y'all identify as. I don't know, man. Walking by, yeah, illegal immigration, man. Y'all call ICE. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> For sure. You know what I'm saying? Y'all got to go, man. You know what I'm saying? Jim Crow Joe lying to y'all. You know what I mean? Because when Trump get back in office or whatever the next Republican going to be, I know some folks say DeSantis, some folks say somebody else. You know what I'm saying? But I'm flooding the sea red at the booth, yo. That's all I know. Cause I'm tired of these jokers, bro. On some real shit, you know what I mean? We ain't got so no problem. Had, had, we, before we go, y'all, you actually had Hispanics out there, Puerto Ricans out there saying that this was anti-Puerto Rican because you sitting up there, and before that, Puerto Ricans was ever in this country. You sitting up here talking about trying to get a debt that's old, and they sit up there as much as black people, everything that they suffer for in this country that Puerto Ricans have been able to gain off of the civil rights movement and everything else, they sat up there and they said that and black people have never been anti-Puerto Rican ever in the history of this country. They sat up there and said that this was this was anti-Puerto Rican. Wait, wait, wait hold up, News Tutter. This morning before even uh, walking down Major Payne's um, damn office, I was up at six in the morning go, and um, y'all probably saw the clip with uh, Don Lemonhead speaking of that whole situation where him... Uh, they're trying to spin it around to, to make Africans responsible for reparations so Europeans don't. Y'all know the clip. That's on the timelines and all of that. Um, I caught one of those um, small hats in the timeline in the comment section literally saying, well, we deserve reparations for building the pyramids. And I was like, you know what? I'm off to this stomp. I had enough of the Internet today. Um, we got whole small hats saying that. They need reparations for building pure. What the fuck are we doing, right? Part of my friends up in this space. And he started, I lay my plan right there. Part of my friends. Yeah, they they they, they tried it with that movie, and you see like the impact of what a movie can actually do. Because now you got white people trying to spin this thing, and like you say, it's all the African fault and this and that. And yeah, Africa took part in the slave trade, but damn. Let's be for real. All of Western Europe was damn had their hand in the slave trade and sit up here and try that like you don't know anything about it. White people have been saying that for the longest though. Yo, so this ain't nothing wow. new. And this this movie just gave them fuel to their fire to go ahead. And you got so many black people that's proud about it and whatnot. You know, I, I say if you're gonna look at the movie, look at it as an entertainment. But if you're sitting up here talking about the actual the actual historical importance of it, you have to be real. Like the homie, the homies were POSs, I mean, to the fullest. I mean, they they were nobody's friend. They went ahead and, and then they, they were just a flunky of, of Western Europe and whatnot. Yo, yo, the crazy part is, is that they try to use the, the, the homies part in it as an excuse to absolve them of the crime. You know, if two people commit a crime, they both go to jail or they both guilty. You know what I'm saying? So it, just because the, the homies participate, that doesn't absolve them of the crime. Uh, but I got a question for everybody that pulled up there. You know, what what would, how do y'all think um, Amiri and Rosinum were feeling about our pull up. Like, do y'all get do you guys get the sense that, you know, they're kind of scared or like, you know, like they're a little they're a little bit shook? Because I'm surprised that I'm actually surprised that Mary came out and ran interference like that. I would be surprised, you know, if that's his brother, he's trying to protect his brother's reputation and whatnot. So that I mean, you know, he he's gonna do what he can to, and like I say, why didn't Ross come out there? Why did he he didn't want to have any of that? He did anything like that? I mean, of course not. Of course, but that, that's what I learned at this pull up is that my and the angle that um, I was even talking with chefs is it, is it take. I said at least one of us has to go make it to that district representative's office, and they never really keep them around the courthouse. And that's the thing. Like we all should know what our district representative is. We um like I, I heard a family out there speaking in bills. Like I dropped to my, like I was right there and I said, oh my God, that sounds so beautiful. Like speaking in bills, it was hitting them with, do you know about this field? Do you know about that? Like, well, no, no, I don't know about all of that, but I want to sit and talk to you about plebiscites. And it's like, we talking bills, homie. What, what are you doing? Well, Ross, Ross got your back. Yeah, we thought we had his, that he had our back, but y'all came sliding out the underbelly of that the city hall behind our back. Now you're in front of us telling us we wrong. Interesting. Interesting. I like, like your bow tie. I like your bow tie. 
interesting. Are you? Are, I like your bow tie, nigga. Hey, to y'all knowledge, do y'all know how many pull-ups are taking place so far? If anybody knows, because I know they had, I know they had a space the other day about a pull-up in Florida. I think uh, Sonny was hosting that, but how many, does anybody know how many pull-ups possibly may have happened already? Or because I, I, I know this has got to be one of the bigger ones that you guys had. And and if you could, if you guys could estimate how many people would you say was probably out there participating in the actual pull-up? Uh, you know the answer to that? That would be a question to speak of with Chef. Because if people were just rolling in and out, I was grabbing a sign when I could and coming back out. I see that every at any given moment, somebody who was driving by would at least see. Uh, if you do, you include the nation with that as well. Y'all had the nation of Islam out there. Yep, doing security, corner oh, to corner. Oh, okay, okay. Wow, so I didn't know I didn't know the Nation of Islam was out there as well too. And, and the recruits, not even I wouldn't call the recruits. So with the the, the the next ups, that's what I learned. They they, they, gonna, they gonna tell you exactly what they've been told to say, and that's all you gonna get. And I'm like, ah, I just learned that just now. The young boy. So yo, Sheck Sheck was able to get the Nation to come out there and do security as well. All uh, corners. Wow. <laughs> That's something right there. So I know, so at least you guys, y'all didn't have to worry about it because y'all had the protection out there. Nobody was going to act stupid with them out there, you know, providing security and whatnot. So y'all really, I mean, I, I wonder if the local news got a chance, like if they had any cameras out there, they, if they got a chance to catch you guys out there and whatnot because this is just exactly what they need to see. So I wonder if, you, if, if your local news stations or reporters, anybody was out there to y'all knowledge? So No, so we had... Um, I think Chef had his own camera crew. Um, I don't. Do you, Snuff, do you know if they were Chefs or they were? Who, I, I believe they were Chefs' camera crew. We're, uh, we're on the owner operators of all. Uh, we control the media moving forward. Yeah. So yeah, that was Chefs' crew, and I think at any given moment, the people who are up on the set with banners and flags and everything, it's probably like fifteen to twenty of us. Okay. That's not including um. Uh, Asian and all of them. Now I'm hearing from the brothers that we have that we have a that we have a decent amount of sisters out there with y'all as well too out there. I, to that, I, yeah. I, I, asked, I personally yeah, asked yeah, yeah. Uh, Stante around the whole perimeter of the what was it, what would we cover a six block perimeter away from City Hall to cover that up and down the aisles and that was just on rotation. That's the first job I was given to with that. So the sisters were definitely stomping there too. Hey, look, I don't know, uh, Shante, uh, tweet Twitter or whatever, and, uh, Aunt La, I see you up here. And, uh, I think, uh, sister, sister, uh, sister, uh, Yawi with the, with the, with the, with the, uh, salad bowl in her profile, she was out there. Uh, and there was a couple other sisters out there too. But it was, it, it, uh, us men definitely showed up today. We'll say that. No, no disrespect to the ladies though, you know what I mean? But we was out there watching y'all back, man. Huh? Uh, that's the way it's supposed to be. I mean, you, you got to have the brothers out there. If you talk about actually trying to brain change about and doing something, you, the brothers got to be out there. It wouldn't look right if it was nothing but the, the sisters out there and the brothers was, was at home chilling. So definitely. Yo, <laughs> tweet this room out, y'all. Tweet this room out, man. Send it to the people. You know, this is my 15th Twitter account. I don't know nobody right now. And, and news topic, my favorite part was uh, not only was the nation on the corners, how they position themselves. So trust and believe they had they bought the horses out. They bought the horse, but the, the the horse twelve on out. They had the horse twelve, the motorcycle twelve, and the foot twelve. And the nation was right there on the corner. I was really surprised. I said, I see how they position it. Like they're they're in the way. So there's a there's a group of twelve right there on the corner of City Hall. And just as I look through them, they're always just in the way somehow. Just even just for how they're standing. So like what the, the groups of police that they were shucking and drawing, what y'all talking about, all of that, they right there in front of their face. Just like you, you can laugh from this perimeter. I've never had that experience before. I, I never have. I really haven't. I mean, so, you know, y'all yeah, think this could be something that this could be an annual event right here that you can get the people to come out there and you can uh you can do a pull up maybe. I mean, could this some could this possibly be annual right here, a yearly type thing or whatever? Hey, September 21st, 11 to 1 o'clock, be there. I mean, excuse me, 2023. You know what I'm saying? It's already solidified. Fuck it. Absolutely, absolutely, man. I mean, like I said, y'all did something, man. I mean, 
and everybody should be proud of themselves and whatnot. I'm, I'm glad that y'all went ahead and did it. Like I just, quite, quite, I did, like I say, I forgot that DJ had told me about it last night. He had mentioned like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out there or whatever. And it kind of just slipped my mind with so much going on. And then quite did early in the day, he started, he started tweeting stuff out and whatnot. And, and I saw it or whatever. So yeah. And he sent me the actual video and whatnot too. And I, I saw, like, like I said, I saw, uh, uh your boy the mayor's brother going at it and stuff and saying crazy stuff about black this and black that like what makes black politicians so afraid to sit up there and, and just if you're a black politician why are you so afraid to say hey black americans deserve reparations and by black americans we mean those that descend from slavery why do you have to why do you have to like get your panties in a bunch when somebody says that what is wrong with that i mean i, I just i mean I, I don't understand that issue anytime Anytime you hear black American, most of them, they have to include everybody. You know, if, if they don't include the entire diaspora, then they want to include Hispanics and Native Americans and everything. Like, what's wrong with black Americans standing up in this country, black Americans who paid the price for everybody that's here? You know, any anybody that migrated to this country, they've paid the price for it. What is wrong with these people here saying that, hey, we're entitled to something. Or is it that people love seeing black Americans at the bottom and they feel like, hey, even though we're at the bottom of the totem pole, we still over these niggas here? Like, is that is that something that makes them sleep better at night knowing that, hey, we ain't exactly the dead last. It's one group that's below us. It's got to be something like that because, like I say, if you just had any kind of common sense, any kind of heart or whatever, you're like, well, hey, man, you know, these people, they do deserve it. They've caught pure hell from the time this country has been founded. So if anybody deserves something, it's them. But when you start hearing that, like you said, the Puerto Ricans, man, I wish y'all had that on tape too. I wish we could hear that too. Like you had Puerto Ricans out there. First off, what was the Puerto Ricans doing out there? Like this ain't have nothing to do with them. Why was they out there at the actual pull up? Foot, foot traffic on Broad, Broad Street in Newark. Atypical behavior. That's what I, that, that was what I could gather from it. Is this foot traffic? And then when they see it, oh, black people are actually trying to do something. I, I like it, it's almost like the vitriol came out of this out of this this Spaniard's mouth, a little short girl too. And then the most the most disrespectful thing, news Todger, is that see back in the day, I'd, I'd be like, oh, everybody looked the same and all that flat blackness stuff. But somebody, a melanated brother, is the one that has to come and grab her. Like, come on, Consuela, come on, stop flipping off the protesters. Like she wanted that smoke, and I'm just like, well, are you sitting? Like, they really, really, you don't want niggas to have shit. That's crazy to me. And see, that's the danger that people talk about with the whole minority coalition talk right there. Because if, if it was a true minority coalition, they would have been out there stumping with you. Yes, yes, give our brothers their reparations. Give our sisters their reparations. We support them 100%. We stand behind our black Americans. Instead, you got her out there sitting up there cutting the food like like somebody stole something from her like somebody did something for her this this is like i say this is the whole minority coalition talk that people talk about right here it was on full display there and this is also coming from a woman point of view so if this woman has that kind of vitriol towards towards the race black race you can imagine the, the kind of talk she's heard from the men and her family and her boyfriends and and, and, and everybody else, friends and stuff like that about black people, about how, how they are and whatnot. So this is this is, this is is really something that really, like I said, I wish y'all could have caught that on camera and actually saw that or whatever. Because she's sitting up there, you said she had, somebody had to grab her and tell her to come on or whatever, instead of her minding her own business. Because I guarantee you, if they had Puerto Ricans out there marching for something like that, you would have had black people sitting up there hating on them and whatnot. Quite it, you got it. Uh, I think DJ was next. Oh, you know, DJ the host, so he'll, he'll go whenever, but hey, DJ... Hey, yeah, yeah, no, 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 it don't matter, Quad, it don't even matter, bro. You know, niggas still got to raise his hand up in a second, you know what I mean? I ain't no one man above the group, you know what I mean? Reparations is the leader, y'all. So, with that being said, did y'all see that one brother that pulled up? He had a Freedman t-shirt on with the fist, and I said, bro, why you over there taking pictures? We over there, and he just shook his head at me. Did anybody see him? Or was I, like, in the Twilight Zone slash Matrix? It, it was like really towards the end or whatever. Real tall, slink, slinky guy. He might have been a, He might have been like some kind of plan out there or something. Who knows, bro? Who knows? Go ahead, Quap. Um, if I told it, uh, news, um, you, you probably would be able to see that footage of 
of someone, of, of, of that girl saying, your phone janky, your phone janky, bro, your phone janky. You, you, you breaking up some, Claudia. Oh, my phone's acting up? Nah, I hear you better now. Go ahead. Uh, no. Hey, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it, it's still it's still breaking up, bro. You may want to you may want to come down or come out and come back in or whatever because yeah, it was kind of breaking up a little bit. It's kind of breaking up a good amount, I should say. Uh, Sound like you're chopping onions in the kitchen or something. Or, 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 or kids running around. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what about now? Yeah, you good? I guess. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I, I guess I have to move closer to the Wi-Fi box and a modem or something. But anywho, uh, yeah, totally. You should be able to see uh, that footage the uh, chef's documentary where it came out because that camera crew was his. I'm pretty sure they were able to capture that. I'm pretty sure they were able to capture that. Yeah, that's important. That's important to show too. Like I say, just for simple fact, like I say, you up here fighting for what's really yours or whatever. And the fact that you have another group up here, a group that'll tell you that, like Fat Joe say, we the same. <laughs> like, we trying to get ours and whatnot, and we fighting for ours or whatever. And we supposed to be the same, quote unquote. And you sitting up here talking about what's racist and, and what's been, I mean, wow. Like, I'm surprised you have that. You must have been having a decent enough sisters out to check her because normally, you know, a sister would have like, What did you say? Like, what? We were? Word, word. <laughs> like, that, yeah, that. But but then y'all was handling business too. So at the same time, I'm glad a sister didn't check them. I'm, so, I'm glad they didn't go ahead and get sidetracked because, hey, you know what I'm saying? Y'all was about your business a day or whatever. So you had you had bigger fish to fry than worrying about some 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 ignorant woman out there. So uh Snug, you got it. I wanna take the time to um put myself on the hot seat. Um DJ said one. Um the last time um you were the one that, that we uh, we exchanged outside um that bookstore today, right? Right, 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 right. I want right. I want yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I wanna be I, I wanna get clear right flag, flag bearer, flag bearer, flag bearer, flag yeah, bearer. Yeah, rebel right, yeah. rebel right. Yes, absolutely. So I'm the I'm the tall lanky nigga with the freeman shirt on that is part of Chef's camera crew and that that's what I was supposed to be there to take pictures. So I wanna ask you where could I improve how oh, should I get this, it? Because clearly, this, I, I did something that was yes. Clearly, I did something that you saw. No, 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 not you. No, nah, that wasn't you. It was a whole, a whole another guy. That wasn't you. Somebody you else had the free. Was rocking the free thing. It was white. But what you say? No, I, I had, had the black shirt on. White. Yeah, we was outside. I had the black joint on with the flag. Nah, 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 nah. This is a brother had an all white t shirt on with the Freeman on it. And I said, bro, you I already knew you was rolling with us because you was. Waving the fly around. We spoke wow. in front of the bookstore, like you said. Well, yeah. this, well, this, this is somebody else. <laughs> no, no, no. Listen to me, bro. Wow. Listen to me. This is somebody totally else I'm talking about, bro. Got it. Nobody peeped it. You feel what I'm saying? He had an all white t shirt on. He was taller than you. And me and you. And me and you, fairly almost six foot. But this, you can cool. tell from a distance his brother was tall. He was snapping pictures. That's what, what, made, what made my gut. I'll catch him. You see, I wear glasses. So, yeah, let's get it. My, 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 you know, my spidey sense flicked up on him. You know what I'm saying? And I said, hey, yo, bro. Got the Freeman on over there. What you doing over there with them? You see what I'm saying? Snap and piss it. That's why he took a couple pictures and rolled up. That's why I love us. We saw that. If you saw that right there, I, I was like, let me put myself on the hot sheet. I heard Freeman. Let me see where I can improve myself. That was that was where that energy came from. So I, I, I like how we move, bro. I'm loving it. I'm loving yeah, it. Yeah, not you. You the brothers that got the uh, the glove with the uh, the, the uh, can't play flat top. Let's come on, man. <laughs> Hey, I'm just a camera grip, man. I'm just there to hold yeah, the camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you, brother. I know who you are, you know what I mean? But nah, it wasn't you. His brother had a white T-shirt on, his, like some jeans. He had a baseball cap on, bro. It wasn't you, you know what I mean? It wasn't me, Shaggy. It wasn't me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> this cat probably this cat probably was some kind of plan out there. Uh, maybe, maybe, did DJ, did he hear you clearly? Maybe, you know, sometimes people don't hear you clearly or whatever, hey. but he heard you. Hey, hey, what, 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 hey, hey. Nah, he does. Body language hey, is another does. form of language, bro. Hold up, hold up a minute, hold up a minute. Body language, Tata, is another form of language. And I spoke to him, too, from a distance. He heard me. Hey, yo, you see your Freeman shirt on? Come on over here. And he just shook his head and kept taking pictures. I just turned my back on and kept it moving. But, you know, we like you said, we got bigger fish to fry. We can't watch everything. That's why everybody needs to show up when this shit go down, man. You know what I mean? I yelled, I yelled. Yeah, that's real talk. I see my girl Aunt Lai up in here. Aunt Lai, please tell us how you, how what was your experience today, and how you felt about being out there and whatnot. Hello, how y'all doing? What's up? Nothing. It was um, you know, I'm already emotional, 
because uh, I got a lot going on. It was, um, I, I don't even know. I'm still like in the clouds. I, um, you know, I'm not at, usually at a loss for words, <laughs> but it was just, I, I can't even explain it. I, um, like all of the, um, again, you know, I'm not usually at loss for words. It was just, it was powerful. Hey, hey look, don't be shy now because do it all in a round. Don't be shy now, girl. No, no I wasn't even shy. I, um, it was just the fact, like, I like the fact, it was just, it's a, it was a lot going on. He was really trying to find out what was going on, and the other people was trying to be like disrespectful. But the fact that he was really open to like, because a lot of times what people have to understand is, I get you do have the people that's on the bull, but some people just don't know. And he was really trying to find out like what's going on, and the other people just saying like when he said all black people, all everybody deserves reparations or something like that. I just was like. The fuck did you just say? But no, nah, do it all didn't say anything. He didn't. But no, that's what I'm saying. He was listening and taking. He and was listening. Shout really out to do. Exactly. Go to the underground. Really Chief funny. Rocker, number one. Chief Rocker, you mad? Right. You know what I mean? Like he was really trying to get like what, what what's going on? Why you You know what I mean? Like he was really trying to seek knowledge, not to be judgmental, not to be whatever. He wanted to know like what was up, and the other people was on some BS. But for the most part, it was it was pretty good. It was um you know everybody came out. It was pretty good. It was um. I can't even explain it as you you know i'm usually not the one lost words it was just like um yeah like it was good here come the laws here come the laws here come the laws you know what i mean like we it was just i can't i can't even get it out like it, it, it was special you know a, lo yeah. a lot of us you know we were talking to each other on twitter for a long time you know, who, uh, everybody, complete strangers, you know, decides to get together and actually put this thing into motion. And now, yeah, not only did we see people that, you know, that we only recognize from Twitter, but we ended up meeting more people that we've never even spoke to before, all for the same cause, and everybody was on cold. Like I said, when the, when, when Mirage Baraka's people came out and ran out interference, the way we all responded was beautiful. We went and stepped to them and was like, yo, what's good? Racer came from New York City and was told, he was like, yo, nah, we, when the when they told me to get out, get out of here, they was like, "Nah, you, you talk to them, talk to me too." You know that that was beautiful. I mean, they can't can't get any more on cold than that, right there. Right, and then, <laughs> and then a guy from North who came, and it was just it was good to see. And the fact that people was receptive to it, a lot of people didn't know. Like I don't know, like a lot of people don't know the reparations and understanding the movement and understanding it, but you know, they was open to it. People was honking their horns. Even the cops were saying, shit, we want our reparations. And they was at work. I was like, yo, what are like, yo, we want our reparations because you know, I heard them talking. I was walking by a couple of them. They was like, they not mad at it. You know what I mean? They just work and they got a job to do. I saw a couple of um, the white ones was kind of in their feelings, but it was, um, it was powerful. It was moving. It was emotional. It was it was like everything that it was supposed to be. And they was calling it Barack Coon. I mean, Barack. <laughs> it was funny. It was good. It was good. It was the, good. The, one of the most important things that I want y'all to remember about this is that this really signal a new era in the way that black people can mobilize because before it was just talk that well y'all just on Twitter and and this and that and you can't do that but you can see just from the, the way that people help mobilize mobilize around uh, Marcel's campaign to now you got people in individual you got different states and stuff doing this pull up and whatnot and the fact like you said that y'all of course you you talk and whatnot on Twitter or whatever but the fact that you can actually come together and actually meet up. And you know y'all had something that that brought solidarity and whatnot. You know this just goes to show that we are truly in the digital age, or even with the digital age, that you could actually make this stuff work in the real world and stuff too. So this is like this is really signaling a whole another way of doing things right now. Yeah, we can mobilize online, and then we can go ahead and take what we do on our, online and take it to the real world. And that's what y'all did today. So I mean, everybody that was out there should be proud for the fact that hey. People can no longer say that Twitter and social media is just all talk and, and no show. Y'all really prove that, that 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 that's not the case anymore. Even when you have somebody like Goddess that's online and Goddess goes ahead and, and, and she does her stuff about the um, Emmett Till thing and then she actually goes out there and she starts doing it. 
So it's no longer just, well, you know, these people on social media, social media ain't real. It's just a, it's just make believe. Yes, yeah, make believe to these people that actually start going out there and actually doing it. You got it, DJ. Nah, y'all cooking, you ain't got to stop for me. But at the end of the day, so, you know, the other situation is that we ran into too. It's like dealing with a lot of folks we were just handing out little flies to after the event. So, you know, hey, reparations, whatever. Just handing out the extra flies that we had. You know what I mean? Get up there, pull up on Instagram, whatever, right? Shout out to the homie chef. So, you know, we going at it with the folks we know from the blog, man, about what's going on. And all they talking about is like, you know, nah, man, we need to be African and all this other stuff. We got into it with the brothers that be in the uh, source of knowledge, bro. You feel what I'm saying? We was battling them. I don't know if... Cash and them had that shit on tape. They was fake taping. You feel what I'm saying? Because Cash was in there ripping. I said, Cash, chill out. Let me let me talk to the OG and shit. You know what I'm saying? And I explained it to him naturally. You know what I'm saying? And he understood. It's like, yeah, okay, reparations and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, we ain't saying that. You know, we're not African by some type of very long weight heritage, but we've been more American than we have been African. In the last 500 years. So you can't say you African if we're saying we're black. So what is the definition of black? Why? You feel what I'm saying? Action of Mary Baraka. What's the definition of black? Oh, that's everybody? No, that means you're unknown, bro. That's why we call ourselves black Negro because we don't know where we come from. Keep it fucking real. Over in Africa, we say we African American. A term coined by Jesse Jackson. So when you say education is the key to success, but reparation by definition is a debt that's old. 40 acres in the room, that's fair order number 15. Oh, so you're going to get a, uh, uh, um, you ain't, what he said, something, you're going you're gonna to be riding a mule nine days type shit? I said, nah, you can give me 40 acres in the Yukon, nigga. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> it was paid off, you know what I'm saying? Insurance paid off for 10 years, you feel what I'm saying? No, I don't got to pay no luxury taxes. I want my shit loaded. I want that ultimate 2023 Yukon now. Straight up, you know what I'm saying? As my mule. <laughs> That's an American thing, so it ain't gonna cost you too much. You know what I'm saying? To get it made, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I don't understand what you're talking about. And then you keep saying it's education. Well, nigga, I got three degrees on the wall. Chef said, I got three, too. Other somebody else said, I got two. I got one, I got three. I got a hundred of them. You feel what I'm saying? What the hell education doing for us? What the hell that mean when you got white boys that's got high school diplomas that make more money than, than, than Negroes with, it, with, with uh, college degrees? So, what does that mean? <laughs> exactly. Back, but, that's, 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 but see, look, that's the 52 fake out, bro. That's the 52 fake out to throw you off. Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't need the reparations. I just need to do what Obama said. Pull myself out the bottom bootstraps. You're right. You're right. You know what I'm saying? What Martin said about the burnout house, he ain't know what he was talking about. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about the uh, the, the, the the fellow with the, with the orange turban? Did he have the I think he had an orange, the, the one with the orange turban in the back. I that walked off on that conversation. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah I, I didn't want to hear that shit because, hey, dude, that's my nigga. I respect you from the block, dude. Laws of the underground all fucking day. And I know you're really interested in what it is we saying. So with that being said, all I can do is walk away from the other jokers that's yada, yada, da And don't really want to come. Well, don't really want to get your Malcolm X on with me, bro. Because I will outverse you all day. And just be chill with it. You know what I'm saying? So, like, Brother Muta just said, you know, when we talk this information, it's scary. You know what I'm saying? To a person that don't know this shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, you got to just be a little bit more cautious. And that's what we try to do with them. Go ahead. Brother just, Mo, you want to say something? Just to give everybody a little bit of historical facts about this city, right? It's, it's, it's definitely a, a big racial divide and a poverty divide. So when we when when the city opens up for outsiders to come in and people and people start talking that language, these guys start getting nervous because it's uncomfortable saying like, listen, it's a group of people that's really serious about coming here and really, really serious and dedicated about African-American or whatever we want to call ourselves um, really serious about being repaired. And this is one of the most impopular cities in America. We just had a Rutgers article, a client article, Who Owns North? This is the most gentrified city. And the rate they gentrify in this (laughs) North New Jersey, the West and the South Ward specifically, Mm -hmm. 
these are the the, the wars with predominantly African American <coughs> wars. So when we talking about rent going up at least sixty to seventy percent within the last three years. We can't afford to be here and we cannot afford to leave. A lot of people don't understand what's going on. 50,000 evictions in Essex County, 50,000 households. We are about to face a zombie apocalypse and we got our public officials throwing parties all summer. When we talking about what's going on, it's, it's serious. It, it, it's a state of emergency. In, in Newark, New Jersey, in every city right. that is democratic ramp for the most part. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, if you're done talking, I'll stay here with your mic. Oh, yeah. Damn, you say 50,000 evictions? Yeah, if you want to go back and forth. Like yes. Talking. Yes, we're talking about um, mm -hmm. average household got at least four or five people, so that's 200,000 at least 200,000 people that's about to be affected um the rent the rent moratorium been up for about two months now they haven't figured out how they going to combat this emergency none of the emergency rental on things they don't work for the population that they supposed to so african-american men we really can't even get apartments the process is too fucking hard the process of credit being credit worthy, having the having the income that's going to have you pay a fifteen hundred dollar rent, right? So in order for you to have the income to be qualified for a fifteen hundred dollar rent, you got to make forty five hundred a month. And a lot of people just aren't making that. So when we're talking about reparations, need and to be had need and to be had we need to go down to penn station and invite all the homeless people mm. to the next pull up so that we feed them while they up there right. so that we we let them know listen we need i, I hate to coin the word with, with the with the occupy thing but more or less right now it's to say it's a state of emergency and the proactive the proactive event that just occurred today People, people are talking about it. They, people, they, they gonna go back in offices and they gonna talk about that. Or, hey, 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 you. hey, 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 hey you. Even though he yelled, and let me speak real quick. That's funny you brought up, like you know, the, the poverty level as far as like the food issues and all that. We talked about food deserts. So now that I'm thinking about it, on the way down there, over here, by by by, by chancellor and shit. Over here by, I'm gonna be right yeah. back. Just hold it down one second. For sure, dog. Go ahead and the business. You know what it is. So over here by the bridge, move. It was a long ass line. I'm thinking like, yo, I know motherfuckers ain't going into Wendy's at fucking like 10, 11 in the morning. You know what I'm saying? I said, what the hell's going on over here and shit? And I pulled over because I got caught at the light right here by fucking a corridor and shit. I said, yo, bro, what the hell going on? You can a special at Wendy's They're giving out free whoppers. I mean, uh, free uh biggies and shit. You know what I'm saying? He said, nah, this is the uh, lane for the food bank. I looked farther up across the bridge past 78. I said, oh, shit. Okay, that's what's up. But damn, at least organize this shit better with the traffic. Where the police at? The traffic police. You, you know, know what I'm saying? That, you know that they just cut 10,000 um, 10, 10, people SNAP benefits? Oh, yeah, we know about that. We were talking about that the other day, bro. We, they playing they, hunger, they mainly all black folks. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They playing play, play, play Hunger Games. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. So, but, so, hey, look, but hold up a minute. That's why we talk about the Doomsday Prepper. At least I try to tell y'all about this, right? Hey, get your water up. How much food you got stocked away? How much what your canned goods looking like? You feel what I'm saying? What your provisions? How much ammo? All this other shit that you got in case this shit jump off and they shut this motherfucker down, just like China do to their citizens. CCP, CCP. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. You want to be locked down on some tyrant shit like China? Hell no, man. You know we ain't having that shit. Well, at least can we be prepared to deal with it? You feel what I'm saying? Shout out to the homie Rachel. Follow Ray Smith right there, y'all. Ray Smith. Two-way, two-way. Get your two-way up. You know what I mean? But go ahead, Allah. What's good, sister? I want to say, is that the guy that we met today that had the the, the bullhorn? That was out there that was just talking? He from North? He went to the West Side? Yes, yes. That's me. That's me. I'm, I'm, with, I'm, I'm with the big homie out right now. Okay. How you doing? I'm, 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 I'm but what we I was over at the studio, I keep telling you to come to. 
<laughs> but I was gonna say he's hundred percent correct because if all this is going on in North, remember what they pushing in North. Remember the skate thing, the the twenty four hours of no violence. But you got two hundred, almost two hundred fifty thousand people being put out of their house, and yep. there you have the corporations, the the corporations, the ones buying up all these houses and things like that. And I think it's important that we met you. I'm glad that we met you because we do really need uh, on the ground to get to people because since North is the largest city in New Jersey, we really need to go there and push for this reparations, reparations. So when they had those six meetings, you know, we had a nice number of people, but we need to show up in droves. And they let, need not to know not to play with us because as an African-American, not African-American, as a black foundational American, the only the what was done to me was only done to me because I was a foundational black American because they want to try what they did with nobody else and they keep doing stuff to us. And because we don't have that voice or they think and they assume that we don't have that voice, that they keep treating us any type of which way today that they know that there is a voice. You know what I mean? We are powerful. We are people. We come up with a message and we, we're we not asking. Like Chef said, we're not asking you, can you please do us a favor by the chance that we vote for you? Can you please? No, we demanding it. And I think it's very, very important, especially with everything that's going on in North New Jersey. Like what you're saying right now is very, very important because they was partying all in summer. So you telling me you partying all summer, but you you about to take these people houses and you about to take all their food? And then you sitting here saying, oh, this is this city's you setting it up and what they do with the crime, they have it certain ways. So then the property taxes go down, then the other companies come up and buy it. Then they raise the rent so high because they did the same thing back in the day. You know, to get rid of the property, they had they let crime happen in certain areas. And then when the property goes down, then the companies come in and buy it up. And that's why you see like the building, even Society Hill on Springfield Avenue. I remember a stolen car, you know, capital. But I think that's very, very important you did say that because they damn sure was partying. Every time you turn around, they would stop the violence and party and party and party. But they need to be teaching people. And we need to do like, like we need to do something else where we do like we get a meeting place and we just talk about reparations and what people can do when they go to these city council meetings. Because North is the largest city. It, I shout out to the people that we had people from Brooklyn. We had people from New York in the building. We had, you know, South Jersey. North Jersey, Jersey was deep, but you know, it's important that we do get that, especially being the largest city. And I'm not biased because it's my home, my hometown, but I just think that it's like, I can't believe it. That's like, wow, that's crazy. I land my thing. Hey, Ray, I hadn't heard from you in a minute. Ray, you okay? You up there? I think Ray is up there. You know, I don't know if you may, um, had some issues with his connection, anything like that. <laughs> Cause Ray been quiet, Ray. You know, you normally hear from Ray, but Ray been quiet for a minute though, man. And damn, I just got back on like I missed what you were saying. Like I, I didn't hear it all. I just heard you closing out. So wish I had heard that exactly, whatever. But I mean, like I say, for all in all, I mean, y'all had a, a really productive day and whatnot. And I'm sure that this this is gonna actually inspire other people to do the pull up and whatnot. So like I said, I was going to actually do the space tomorrow on it, but I figured like, hey, why not do it today? We covered, we talked about the um, food deserts and we talked about the, the, the black women's equal pay today or whatever. So this was just a space that we was able to put in three topics or whatever, three very important topics at that. So, and uh, the pull up, you know, this is something that really, really needed to take place. And I'm glad that you guys are able to do it. I'm glad that we was able to have our sisters out there with the brothers and whatnot. And everybody was unified and on code. And that's the most important thing. When everybody talk about leaders and this and that, hey, you got a bunch of organizers. That's what it was. Because everybody that, that took place in this was a leader. So everybody organized. And like they say, the code was the actual leader. So, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely... Definitely glad to hear from everybody up in the space and whatnot. We're not going to keep it going. I know everybody, um, we normally go to about 10, but we'll go ahead and we're going to go ahead and end it. If anybody wants to say anything, they can go ahead. If not, then we're going to go ahead and close it out for the night. Then Snug, you got it. Thank, thank you so much, News Turner. Again, great space. Thank you so much for, um, for you know, giving that moment. Just to, uh, you know, sometimes you got to, when it's a long day like that, you just have to just say, wow, that was real. 
Um, I have a question for Aunt Live. Were you the one that was at the tail end that holding the sign on the edge of the sign? Was that you? That voice sounds familiar. Aunt Live. Yes, sweetie, that was me. I think we were standing next to each other. I had the um the dookie braids in my hair. Uh, that was it. So you were there when I said when I heard him say we all oh, from Africa. Yeah, and I said, can you hold? <laughs> what, 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 what we do, Allah? You would have got you, got you. <laughs> I was good. Do you jump that damn time, Papa. I knew that was you. I knew that was you. Yeah, I, I appreciate you too. Yeah, we had the. It was windy, but we got it. Yeah, that felt good. That felt, it was a pleasure to meet you. Stand right next to you too. That was real. We were ten toes down. Yes. Ten toes down. Yeah. We gonna do it again. Hello. Original, go ahead and unmute your mic. Oh, we can barely hear you, brother. We can barely, right, can barely you. hear you. Like, you sound bumpled and, and low for real. All right, can you hear me now? I, I can hear you now, but it's still staticky, but I can hear you well, better. My connection has been kind of bad tonight. But I just want to say. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's bad. Yeah, it's real bad. It's real bad. Yeah, it's real. It's it's real bad. Tr try to uh, disconnect and we'll let you come back in or whatever and see if we can get a little bit clearer. But yeah, it's real. All right. It's real bad. Hopefully, let me go ahead and see if we can go ahead and bring him back as a speaker and let him go ahead and get up in here. I know you want to say something, so... Okay, uh, original, go ahead and try it now. You're better? Yeah, much okay. better. No, I just want to say I'm I'm very pleased with what I'm hearing tonight. And like I have been telling people keep it before, now I came up out of the, uh, what they call the Pan-African, Af uh, African Center Movement. But see, before I got on Twitter, I didn't know that these other black people in the diaspora had all this vitriol for foundation of black Americans. And I know some, and I know some, some people who are still hardcore Pan-African, but like I tell them, I will not sit up and allow anyone to attack my tribe. And they ride up into the sunset as if, you know, uh, they are better than we are. And one thing I had to tell someone is I said, look, <clears throat> you all still refer to the original Hawaiians as hawaiian now although you can say they came from africa but you still call them hawaiian so if you can call them hawaiian then you can call us foundation of black america you can call us freedmen or whatever but there is no way that i'm going to sit up here and continue this flat black crap when it does not work if everybody's flat black when we are about to get a check but then if the check, if, if they think the check ain't coming, then uh, they're back to their little tribalism. Well, I'm not sorry. I, don't, I even stop saying I'm sorry. I just say, I'm not sorry. You know, we got to defend our group the same way they defend theirs. And, uh, if, and whatever happened in between happens, but I will not sit up here and attach. I just saw something on, uh, it was on Twitter, whereby this guy, he's, he's from Nigeria, and he's trying to say uh, reconsidering reparations, talking about reparations should go to Africa. Uh, I'm, well, uh, hold up. No, I am not putting you before me. You all have had all this time to, to stand up and fight for what you want. But see, it has always been foundational black Americans who have stood up and fought that fight and fought that fight. But my point is this, uh-uh, no, black, black is no longer, is, Black, black is dead. We, I, I, for me, I can only speak for myself. I'm not doing that anymore. And I've had some people who are staunch Pan-African to get upset with me. But like I tell them, uh-uh, you just gonna have to be upset. If we never speak again, I won't miss you. I mean, that's just where I met with this because this has been going on for too long and we got to stand up and do what we know is best for us. And I land on that. All right, brother. Appreciate you. Definitely appreciate everybody that came up in the space tonight. Uh, DJ, you got something you want to say before we go ahead and close it out? Hey, you want us to say a piece? 
Before you go, Musa, Um, listen, I, like I said before I came in, my name is Musa El Amin. I, I'm not really in the Twitter space. I'm going I'm to get into the social space. But for anybody that's on Facebook, would you please go to Muta El Amin, add me in. I'm talking a bunch of a bunch of a bunch of things that we need to hear. We need to we need to be pointing the finger at the government. The government is definitely who has the resources. And like we uh, we had a generation of people who just didn't have the heart to because they was, you know, worried about them and their family. So I like the I like the way you guys are attacking this issue. Well, not even you guys now, because I'm, you know, I feel like I'm a, I'm a part of this this thing, because I've been talking about speaking about reparations for a long time. It we it's needed to heal us. Um, so everybody else is combining resources together to move ahead, and we must do that in order to move ahead. That's how that's how it works. You know, no no one man is a mountain, and you know, but together we definitely have that strength. And just thank you guys, and you know, I appreciate you guys for coming out. All right, good to hear from you, brother. Hope to see you in, in more spaces and whatnot. Aunt Liza, so you got your hand up. I just want to say thank you, everybody, for um, for today. And uh, my podcast interview landed today. It, it went live, so you click on the link. It's the second one up in uh, Megatron, Voltron, whatever the top thing is called. And my podcast interview I did a couple of weeks ago is in there. If you could please um, share it, um, listen to it. And the first one is my book. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, I just retweeted it out for you. So definitely you'll get a chance. I'll definitely check it out or whatever. Probably sometime tomorrow or whatever. Definitely um, go ahead and let's see. Um, is that a, is that going to be a weekly podcast you got it there or something? or? Um, I was interviewed for her podcast. It's the uh, I think it's the the positive side of the bad stuff. And I'm in the Black Speakers Network, and they have a thing with people who host podcasts. And I should be doing three of them in the next week or so. I have another one scheduled in a couple of weeks, and then I have another one I have to schedule. And I'm gonna be, you know trying to promote my book and doing podcast interviews and things of that nature. So that's just one interview that I did recently. Okay. Okay, well, good luck to you, sister, as always. Uh, DJ, I'm going to go ahead and let you say something. Yo. Yeah, you there? Yeah, 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 my battle wasn't even sure we over here was chatting it up. But, uh, yeah, you know, everybody said we agreed to agree. That's what I say, right? So, you know, everybody cooking. Shout out to everybody that came out to the Jersey pull-up. That shit was hella fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Reparations, goddamn it. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, again, y'all, you know, we need to do a whole bunch more of these and start finding ways to get the information down to our peoples. Yeah, we did a lot of combat in the day, man. Brother, brother, dogs, Ty, I haven't felt tired like this. My feet hurt. I had to think. I got to go sit down, yo. What the hell? You know what I'm <laughs> I know it ain't old age. I was just standing on my feet the whole time. You know what I mean? From the moment I woke up. So, you know, it was no sitting down or whatever. But at the end of the day, hey, that's the war rooms, right? Our people suffer much worse. So we could do a little bit of stopping and walking. Just to get our damn check that we were already owed. And I guess I'll leave it there, man. Reparations, man. All right, y'all. We had a really small room tonight, but it still was really productive. We normally have a larger room than this, but a very important issue. So I'm glad that everybody, shout out to all y'all that was up there in New Jersey representing, man. Y'all definitely, um, definitely proud of y'all. And I'm so glad that you came out and whatnot. And I'm glad y'all came to the space and whatnot. I shared, like I said, quite, I'm glad you, you mentioned something about it because, you know, like I say, I was thinking about holding it tomorrow, but hell, I mean, like, what, why not hold it tonight or whatever? So, for all y'all, y'all know that we normally go on 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so we'll be back tomorrow with a with another Twitter space, so y'all make sure y'all check us out. If you're not busy, if you can't make it, then you know we're going to record it, so make sure you try to listen to some, at least listen to some of the recordings, so catch us, catch us live tomorrow night or whatever, so we definitely appreciate everybody who stopped in and whatnot. DJ, you got something to say? Yeah, my bad. I know you're closing out. Hey, uh, I think, hey, sister, uh, the reparationist perspective she have in the space right now, too. So, uh, if, if mosey, mosey on over there, y'all. One love. All right, y'all. So, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Everybody have a good night and check us out tomorrow, Thursday, for our, our Twitter space. So, we'll see y'all then.
Hey, hey, Sister Tyrell said, hurry up and upload it to the space. She got kicked out. Hurry up, she said. <laughs> I'm going to get ready right now. We're going to end it so she can hear it right then, okay? For sure, my dude. Peace, y'all. Peace. Come up to us. Uh, Sister Reparation is respected. One love, one love. All right.